after e4, e5, knight c3, and knight c6. As mentioned in the previous videos, white goes on with f4. And today we're going to look at this move d6 now. So white goes on with obviously knight f3. And after bishop to g4, of course, the black's idea is to play knight to d4, put pressure on the knight, and then swap everything. So our next move is going to be bishop to b5, pinning the knight. Plenty of options now are possible. Let's start with a6. What happens if they challenge our bishop immediately? Because they want to deprive us of the bishop pair. In fact, bishop a4 will be met by b5, then you have to move the bishop again, then knight d4 is happening. So you just take the knight. Pawn takes back, and now you take the pawn in e5. So you're up a pawn. Black has to take back. Well, black doesn't have to take back. You can take the knight first, but it doesn't make any difference. You're up a pawn. So black taking back, let's go through this. Black has a double isolated pawn on the c file, and it's already a weakness. Plus, we have pressure over e5, which means that now we can play h3 straight away. All of these moves are forced. Now, bishop to h5, and you are able to kick the bishop away with g4, and then you win a clean pawn in the center. The knight will be supported potentially by d4. You can take the bishop if you want as well. You're not only up a pawn at the end of this, but you also have a better position. Black is far away from being able to castle, whereas you can castle any time. The king is safe, even if there's a lot of empty squares, the king is actually safe. So let's go through the variation where they take the knight. Queen takes back, and the material is equal. Black didn't lose a pawn at the end. Now here's how simply it goes on. Okay, knight f6, black has to de de develop the pieces. So I don't know, bishop e7, bishop d6 will come, maybe bishop c5 looks good, stopping us from castling. We go on with d3. The idea, of course, is to play bishop g5 and start piling up pressure over the f6 square and go for a winning endgame already. We're going to go through bishop e7 now. If black plays bishop to c5, c5 instead of bishop e7, we still go on with bishop to g5. And now black's best move is bishop back to e7, which is why we need to go through bishop e7 instead of bishop c5. Bishop, e bishop c5 does nothing. However, you might be thinking, okay, what if white doesn't... What if black doesn't care and just plays rook to b8? Typical move here to attack a pawn. You can't really play b3 here because then bishop b4 looks terrible for white. So so after this move, you simply castle alongside. You don't have to worry about an attack here because it's very difficult for the queen to join the king, the queen side because there's a double isolated pawn here. Like works like a barrier. So the queen will have to do something like queen c8, queen b7. But even then, you're putting pressure on f6. You can take on f6 infiltrate it's going to be very easy so let's go on now black castles and we take queen takes queen takes pawn takes and now white goes on with the best move rook d to f1 attacking the weak square f6 remember in this type of position when there's a e45 game you always have that option of playing knight e2 knight g3 knight f5 with a glorious position for the knight so after king g7 protecting the pawn Rook f3, you're preparing to double up the rooks. Rook f2, e8. These are all the best moves by the black player and by the white player in this specific variation, but you're supposed to win anyway. Rook h2, f1. Now we have double attack over f6, so rook e6. And now, of course, knight e2, thematic. The idea is to go to g3 with obvious threats and great outposts for the knight. So after bishop to e7, best move, white goes on with g4 first. And after rook to f8, Remember, black has no counterplay on the queen side because these pawns are not going anywhere. It is completely pointless to push them. White now goes on with knight g3. The position is, is evaluated like plus 260 at the moment. White is simply threatening knight to f5 check. Then you can take the bishop and then the rooks are gonna go win a pawn in the f file. And look at white's pawn structure and black's pawn structure. You're completely winning. The best move according to the engine by black knight is king to the g6, avoiding the check. But you still have a great advantage, because now it's all a matter of zugzwang. White's best move is a4. What we're going to do here is running out of moves. Black has no counterplay on the king side, because anything like h5 or f5, you can simply just take it. And you're creating more empty squares around the black king, and you've got two rooks very well placed. Black might, he will have to play a move. And knight f5 is always an option, so let's say a5 for instance. Now knight f5 comes attacking the bishop with the threat we mentioned before. One last thing I'm going to mention before we close this line is even after bishop to d8, avoiding the swap, meaning the black can keep control over the weak f6 square, which is the square that we're going for in this game. White goes on with check, and after the king moves back, white's plan goes on with king to d2. And the idea is to play b3, so b3, king c3, and exploit the fact that none of these pieces can actually move without losing 
control over key squares. For example, rook d6 is, can, is met by knight f5, uh, bishop moving away somewhere else, and remember you're putting a lot of pressure over f6. This rook in f8 moving somewhere could be potentially met by a move like g5, which puts even more pressure over f6, and it cannot be taken back because rook f7 is a massive threat. The computer evaluates this as if white was up a piece. Uh, so let's move on to the next line. So let's make a recap so that we can memorize this better. f4 and now d6, knight f3, and the black player is pinning our knight, so we have to pin the opponent knight. So we're looking at the variation a6, okay, we take the knight, they take back. Then we take the pawn, they take back. Then we attack the bishop. We, we mentioned why the bishop can't really go back without losing material, so bishop takes, queen takes, and now knight f6, d3. And let's go through bishop c5 once again. We know we have to play bishop to g5 at this point. Earlier we went through rook to b8, and what happens next? What happens after the bishop goes back to e7, which is the best move? And it puts more protection over f6 and makes sure that we don't break the pawn structure. Okay, we castle, and after black castles, looks like a normal game. So now we play bishop to e3. The idea here now is to go on with knight to a4, b3, and queen to g3 to put pressure over e5. It's thematic. So after black's best move, which is a5 here, knight a4, rook to b8, putting pressure on b2, white's best move is king to h1, getting away from the dangerous diagonal, because black has a dark square bishop, and after knight to d7, white goes on with queen g4, obviously threatening bishop h6. Now you may argue, how is bishop h6 working here if black can play bishop to f6? Well no, because now you go back to d2 and you have induced your opponent to play the bishop in f6 rather than the knight, and now there's no way that this bishop can defend the pawn in a5, so now you're threatening to take it, and there was no one else that can defend the pawn. A move like rook to b5 is met by b3 and c4, eventually the rook will not be able to be there anymore, we can play c4 straight away, and in this position it's black to move, if black, if black plays pawn to g6, well we might go through also knight back to f6, but then you go back to g3, and still remember you always have the option of bishop h6 here. So let's go through what happens after g6, so we learn how to exploit this situation, well in this case black has created a weakness, because now you play again queen to g3, putting pressure over e5, White simply has an advantage here, he's threatening to play bishop to h6, he control the dark squares, and as soon as the rook, the black rook moves, you can do rook f3, rook f1, and put a lot of pressure over f7. Black's best move according to the engine is bishop to h4, attacking the queen, but now you play queen to g4, and you're threatening g3, and black is just west, wasting tempos. So in this position, it's black to move now. Black can't play like knight to b6, for example, because then, after a swap of knights, take back, we have a a free pawn in e5. Bishop to d6, for example, to protect the pawn further, is met by bishop to h6, and after rook e8, you have rook f3, you prepare to put pressure over f7. Knight f6 doesn't do much, because you're going to play rook a to f1, you have double attack over the knight. The bishop can't go and defend the knight, because there's pressure over the square e5, which is a crucial swap. Remember at the beginning, when, when we took the pawn in e5 and doubled up this c file, this is how you're going to be winning this game. You're going to be play on, playing on these weaknesses. So let's look at this option, rook e6. This also doesn't work. White goes on with the prophylactic b3. And as a simple but unstoppable plan. Knight b2 and knight c4. Position as if, is evaluated as if white was up a piece. After removing the bishop, bishop g5 wins the game easily. One more line we're going to look at is the following. So d6, knight f3. And now they're pinning our knight. We pin their knight a6, we take the knight, take back, we take the pawn, take back, attack the bishop, take, take. Couldn't be simpler than this. Knight f6, d3. So earlier we went through bishop c5 and everything that happens next. What happens after the more solid bishop to e7? Castle, castle. And now white's best move is king h1, you want to get uh, get out of this diagonal. After rook to b8, play b3, it's always safe to play b3 in this type of positions. And after bishop to b4, this doesn't come with the pin. So we don't have to worry. Knight to e2, it's an e45 game, so you're able to play uh, knight, g, knight g3, knight f5. So after best move, which is bishop to d6, knight to g3. And let's look at this option, this type of idea which we haven't looked at. Knight to e8, with the idea of pushing f5, you have to stop that by playing knight to f5. And after bishop to e7, black has an idea of playing knight to d6 and swapping our knight, because our knight is very powerful in there. White goes on with bishop to b2, 
ultimately putting pressure on the pawn in e5. So it will be just a winning move by white to take that pawn. So after bishop to f6, queen to g3, putting even more pressure over e5. And the black queen is powerless against it. Remember, rook to b5 to protect that is just not an option because you can kick the rook away. You win a lot of tempos with your pawns. Uh, the queen cannot go to d6 to protect the pawn, not even e7 because both squares are controlled by the knight. So after, let's look at this. g6, how do we meet this move? Okay, knight a6 check. And after king h8, black is ready to fianchetto to the bishop with an attack on the knight and potentially finally push the f-pawn with some counterplay idea. Well. Here's the standard move, rook takes bishop. This can be taken in both ways, with the queen or with the knight, but of course taking with the queen, you run into bishop e5, pinning the queen to the king, or knight takes f6, this runs into queen to e5, doubling the attack with the knight, so you are winning material no matter what. This knight cannot be defended further, let's say king to g7, the knight is still pinned, so you're going to play knight to g4, and you are inevitably winning material. 